Thank you for joining us for worship here at Church Street United Methodist Church on this first Sunday of August. Many of you have started back to school or perhaps have children or grandchildren who will be starting soon. Next Sunday during our time of worship, we will have special prayers for students and teachers and administrators and all who are involved in our school community. And now let us open our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship Almighty God. Will you join me today in our call to worship, which is based on Psalm 50? The Mighty One summons us from sunrise to sunset. Out of perfect beauty, God shines forth. God calls to heaven and earth, gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me. The heavens declare the righteousness of God, the judge of people and nations. Let us not forget God, but with thanksgiving as our sacrifice, let us be a people of justice. We worship the God of our salvation.
we've come to that time in our worship service where we recognize the many blessings that God has given to us. I invite each of us to consider how we can be alert to recognize the ways that we already are blessed as we give thanks to God for God's many blessings. If you'll join me in our affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is from Luke's gospel, the 12th chapter, starting with the 32nd verse. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have often heard the words of Jesus' exhortation from today's lesson as a warning. You must also be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. There are multiple moments in the Gospels where Jesus proclaims the kingdom is at hand and that the disciples should be ready. I've always heard this call to be alert as a warning. Reading this lesson as warning is out of step, however, with the tone and tenor of this section of the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is setting an invitation before the disciples. Jesus paints a picture of God arriving fully and unexpectedly to host a banquet. One commentary I read this week said that we should imagine a stained glass window with God depicted wearing an apron and serving the lowly. The imperative, be ready, could certainly be a warning or an invitation. We know that it is an invitation, however, in this lesson, because Jesus tells us to be ready for something wonderful. Over the last two Sundays, we focused on prayer and discernment. Pastor Catherine invited us to see that greed and other sins can be products of trusting ourselves and not relating to and speaking with God. What we pray for in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, we are to put into action. I do not mean that we should make the kingdom come, because only God can do that. What I do mean is that if we are to pray for the kingdom, Jesus teaches us to actually look for it to arrive in our midst. Several years ago, I read an article by Eugene Peterson entitled, The Unbusy Pastor. Peterson wrote this article in the early 80s, nearly two decades before he became known for his interpretation of scripture, The Message. Peterson describes the pressures pastors feel to always be busy, to always justify their existence by listing all the ways that they're indispensable. Peterson was writing for clergy and other church workers 
in this article, but the truth of our world is that so many of us feel the pressure to be busy all the time. It is very true that many of us have constant demands upon our time, our resources, and our attention. Certainly, some demands and obligations must be met. The dishes need to be washed, appointments need to be kept. Jesus is not placing another task upon the list. Jesus is asking us to reimagine how we view the world. It's so tempting to view the world with lists and requirements. Get good grades, get into a good school, get a good job, be promoted every 2.5 years. The lists never end and the tasks continue on in monotony. Perhaps that is another reason prayer is so hard for so many of us. We view it as a task that can be accomplished with checklists and how-tos. Greed can so easily gain a toehold through our pursuit of busyness. We save and we hoard so that someday we can have enough to rest. All the while, opportunities for genuine communion with God and sincere respite whiz past us. One of the joys of going on outdoor adventures with children is that they notice things. When I'm outside, whether walking, hiking, or cycling, I try to live by the words, move with a purpose. Those words can be interpreted to mean a lot of things, and even really good things. I often live them out, however, as keep moving, get there quick, minimize distractions. I can be so focused on getting from point A to point B that I miss all the things that surround me, all the things in between A and B. This is especially true in the paths and places that I frequent. When I'm with someone new, or especially with a child, they force me to stop. A butterfly landing on a dandelion is a spectacular event. A fawn munching on leaves is cause to be late. We've been conditioned to call these interruptions distractions. But what if this playful alertness is exactly what Jesus is talking about? Be alert. Something truly beautiful might happen. The glorious kingdom of God might spring out from that thicket of tangled schedules and busy demands at any moment. Stay alert. Several years ago, my wife gave me an Apple Watch for Christmas. I have enjoyed the watch, and it has even been helpful in many areas of my life. I can load airplane boarding passes onto my watch. I can change songs or adjust the volume from my watch. The watch can be really helpful in tracking exercise and activity. I didn't have the Apple Watch long before I noticed one particularly dark aspect of wearing a tether to the technologically connected world. Everything from news articles, weather forecasts, and text messages will send an alert to my watch that gives a little buzz to my wrist. Of course, when this happens, the impulse is to check my watch and see what's happening. But checking your watch when another person is around makes them think that you're busy, rushed, or crunched for time. Or it makes them feel like you're looking for any excuse to get away from them. Without even trying, I was giving off the air of busyness and overimportance. Peterson talks about cultivating a spirit of leisure, which he defines as a quality of spirit, not a quantity of time. What if this is what Jesus means by his exhortation to be ready? We're invited to trust, to truly trust fully in the goodness of God and the coming of God's kingdom that we can set down our agendas and tasks that aim to control everything. It is in a spirit of leisure that even the most menial of tasks can reveal joy and beauty. When we look for the kingdom to appear just about anywhere, we might be surprised where the kingdom actually shows up. The chaos around us will not just magically disappear, but perhaps the ways we relate to that chaos will be transformed. Jesus invites his disciples to be ready for a heavenly banquet where God is the host and takes on the role of servant. Our modern ears stand up at the word slave that Jesus uses in this parable. The word, rightly, makes us uncomfortable. Translators sometimes use the word servants in place of slaves. Ultimately, either is fine as long as we can still see Luke's promise 
of the great reversal. The world is being turned upside down by God's kingdom. In Jesus' day, there were well-known hierarchies and protocols about who could sit where and when at a meal. Jesus references these well-known hierarchies in other moments in the Gospels to make similar points. Slaves being served by the master is a drastic upheaval of the way things are supposed to work. Yet, Jesus also seems to indicate that such a revolutionary change could easily be missed. The call to alertness, to be ready to spot the impending blessings, is a nod to the subtlety of the kingdom. Everything in the Roman world was about pageantry and cementing who belonged in what order, often in over-the-top ways. From table arrangements to the frequent festival parades, all worked together to communicate order of importance in the social structure. The ways in which hierarchy are communicated are certainly different in our time than in Jesus' day. But we continue to sort and order people into categories of belonging and value, don't we? It is in the midst of our own sinful and harmful systems, built as they are around the ideal of being busy, that Christ's invitation echoes down to us. Be alert. Look around. Here comes the kingdom. I invite each of you, as you go through the week ahead, to be alert. Watch out for blessings and the surprising arrival of God's grace. Find a way to observe, to notice, and to care in the days ahead. Something as simple as a leisurely walk through the neighborhood might hold revelations about God's presence in your life. I find that when I am the most wound up, the most anxious, the most irritable, that's when I fail to notice things. It's only through a spirit of leisure rooted in Christ's coming kingdom that I am able to allow God and not my lists and plans to shape my attitude. May the peace of Christ's kingdom enter our hearts and shape our lives. Amen. Let us pray. We are touched, loving God, that you call us little flock. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is a comfort to welcome this image of you guarding and guiding us. Although we are watching on television, computer, and iPad screens, and are apart from one another this morning, we know that you are huddling us together through the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the tie that binds us together through prayer. We join our hearts in thanksgiving for the gift of a new month. August calls us to be ready and gives us a sense of newness and excitement. School buses have been practicing their routes. Parents and guardians have shopped for clothes and notebooks. Teachers are reading over their class roles. Even if we are not in school, we cannot help but be inspired to renew our minds, sharpen our pencils, and be ready for new understanding and anticipate fresh beginnings. We remember U.S. and world maps that hung on our walls at school. We remember spinning the globe and finding answers to social studies worksheets. Faraway places are no longer distant to our children and youth. They are a click away. We pray for the people you created all around the world, O oh God, not as distant people, but neighbors. We pray that all people could live in peace and without the fear of conflict. We can see places on the map, Taiwan, Bangkok, Moscow, Bakhmut. We hurt for our neighbors who have experienced such devastation in Kentucky and Virginia with recent floodings. O oh God, whose heart is so tender towards us, you call us your little flock. We offer those who are near and dear to us in prayer. You know the ones who are hurting and lonely because of health issues or financial worries. There are family strains and family celebrations. Thank you for knowing and caring about the concerns we carry in our hearts. Forgive us when we forget to share the gratitude and thanksgiving for healings and reconciliations and wholeness. May our posture always be one of readiness and willingness to serve you in all that we do. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.